All right, so these are your phylum and area notes, but these are just the general characteristics. You have an additional video you'll have to watch on all the diversity of this phylum. So let's get started with some general characteristics. First of all, they're radially, radially symmetrical, which means any way you slice them, they're going to be symmetric on both sides. The oral end also has a mouth surrounded by tentacles. So when we think of nadarians, we typically think of jellyfish and you usually think of their stinging tentacles. You may have even been stung by a jellyfish before. Also, many are brightly colored and there's over 9,000 types. Their predators are things like sharks, tuna, and even sea turtles. And they don't have a nervous system that, like we do. They do have a nerve net though. And they have two forms. So there's a polyp form, which is mostly sessile, meaning it doesn't move. And then the medusa form. The medusa form you'll see is what we commonly think of. So some general body forms that you need to know. So they have two tissue layers. So previously we've talked about the three different tissue layers that are typically in things like us or other vertebrates, but they only have two. So they have the epidermis, which is the outer layer, and then they have the gastrodermis, which is the inner layer, and then they have some digestive juices. So they don't have a digestive system and a reproductive system and the respiratory system. It's just kind of very, very, very basic. Um, they also have something called mesoglia, which is in between those tissues, and it's jelly-like. So it's kind of what makes them squishy. And they have something called a gastrovascular cavity. So this is that inner digestive cavity or what serves as their stomach. So some key terms for the body structure. So hydrostatic skeleton, it just means that water or the body fluids are confined in a cavity. They don't actually have a bone structure. A statocyst is that small sac that surrounds them and it moves in response to gravity which causes those nerve impulses. Because jellyfish, they can move and they can sense things, but they don't have a nervous system that we typically think of. They also have two types of discs. They have an oral disc and a pedal disc. So the oral disc is what surrounds the mouth. It allows water circulation. And the pedal disc is used for attachment. And this is primarily sea anemones. And they have something called the acontia. So this is in the mesentery, and it has nidocytes, and those are going to be what sting their prey when they try to catch them. So there's two forms. There's a polyp form and a medusa form. The polyp form is sessile, like we said, so it's attached to something. So it has a tubular body and the mouth is pointing upward. There's also a whirl of tentacles around the mouth and they have a very small amount of the mesoglia. They don't have a bunch. And like I said, most of their life is sessile. They can move several ways. They can somersault, which is very interesting to watch. If you look up some videos, they can move in an inchworm fashion they can glide and they can completely flip and walk on their tentacles. And these mostly reproduce asexually. So the medusa form is what we commonly think of. So this is a bell or umbrella shaped body as you can see in that picture over there. And the mouth is directed downward. They also have a small amount of tentacles that are directed down, but they have a large amount of the mesoglia. And they have a motile, weak body contraction, so it allows them to move. They're not going to race you or by any means, but they can still move a little bit. They typically move with the water flow. And they can move two ways, so horizontally, so that is strictly by nature. They're not really using any energy whatsoever to move. It's just the water currents and the wind. But they can also move up and down vertically by swimming, and most of the medusa forms reproduce sexually. So at this point, I'd like you to pause the video and sketch this. There are several sketches in this video and they will be a separate grade. So make sure you stop here and sketch and you'll also be responsible for these on your test. All right, so now that we've talked about the general structure, let's talk about the tentacles. That's what people think of when they think of jellyfish. That's what stings you. So they have nidocytes, which are stinging cells. So this picture over here is a nidocyte completely. It's what that cell looks like. So they have a modified cilium, which you know is kind of like a tail. And they have stinging structures called pneumatocysts. And what happens is the undischarged one is kind of inside, like this big coil that you see here. And then once they sting you, that's what comes out. So let's look at a tentacle specifically. So the pneumatocysts are released by touch or chemosensation. So chemosensation, chemochemical. So it's something chemically they can sense in the water. 
And that coiled thread that we just talked about is released. So it's similar to throwing a harpoon. If you think back to like old whaling days when they threw that harpoon off the end of the boat, that's what it's like. So the functions. So those spines are filled with toxins. They penetrate the prey and usually jellyfish don't feed on humans. So the prey that they do attack are small enough to be killed or very, very immobile. Those hollow tubes then are going to wrap around the prey. So you'll see the tube or the thread in the picture here. So that's the thread. And there's sticky secretions that also help it to anchor. So how they sting. This is another sketch that you will be responsible for doing. So if you see here, this is step one. And it's not cooperating. So step one is there. So that trigger is this little spike you see here. That's the trigger, that's what touches your skin. Well then, step two, this is the real bad part. This is where that stinging thread, it actually penetrates your skin, which is pretty terrible when you think about it in this way. But this is how you have such a reaction to jellyfish. So go ahead and take a minute and pause this and sketch this out and be sure to label everything. All right, so that stimulus response we talked about. So they don't have a nervous system. They do have that nerve net. So they can do basic coordinated movement. If you remember, they can move vertically. And both the epidermis and gastrodermis have nerve cells in a loose kind of network, which is where that term nerve net comes into place. So stimulus in one part just goes through the whole body. So kind of like us, if you touch something, if it's hot, for example, like you can feel that throughout your whole body that it was hot. So same thing, if they touch something, they'll feel it. Um, the extent of the spreading though depends on the stimulus strength. So if it's a very weak stimulus, they're not really gonna spread it throughout their body like they would if it was something major. And they also have sensory cells in their body. So these prefixes a little bit, again, so chemoreceptors, we already talk about, talked about those, that's chemical. The thigma receptors, these are touch. And thig, you can kind of think of maybe thigh. It's a body part, so it's touching something. Photoreceptor is light, and then stat assist, that's just for their balance. That way they don't completely flip upside down in the water. So the reproduction of nadarians is kind of different too. So they're dioecious, which means that there's male and females. Their organs are in separate individuals. And what happens is a fertilized embryo is going to form a larva that has cilia, which are the little hairs that help it swim. This is called a planula. Make sure you remember this term. So that planula is what attaches to the substrate, and then that's where that young polyp first forms from. Then eventually you will have medusa that form from budding polyps, but budding is also a type of reproduction. So you're producing more polyps from existing, which is asexual reproduction. But they do have, like we said, male and female organs, so they can also do sexual reproduction. And in this situation, it's external fertilization. All right, so this is the final slide. And once again, you need to pause here and sketch this out. This is the most important diagram in this video. So go ahead and pause it. Pay special attention to the terms mitosis, meiosis. That's where your sexual fertilization is going on. You can see we start with a polyp here and then we get to a medusa over here. And also budding, that asexual form of reproduction we talked about is taking place over there to the left. So go ahead and pause this or pause the video, go ahead and sketch this, and then you are done with your notes.